Hello again, I'm Dr. Brian Holsey at Foundations Chiropractic. Last time we spoke about some of the thyroid tests that I feel are vastly important and some of the thyroid tests that are maybe being missed there. Today I want to get into a little bit of thyroid hormone physiology or how that actually functions within the body. So what we need to look at, well, we're going to go from start to finish from brain function to um, all the way to the end of the cellular level. But we're going to do that in a series of little videos here, probably about five minutes long. So what I want to cover today is the brain to the thyroid gland and getting into a thyroid peroxidase enzyme as well. So let's start up high here. We have the brain, the specifically the hypothalamus of the brain and the pituitary gland. A small little gland that sits at the base of the brain right behind your eyes. So this hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH. And TRH now acts on the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Now this test is one that is commonly checked in the medical realm. However, sometimes this is the only test that is checked now. And unfortunately a lot of people are missed with the thyroid symptoms because this lab range, or we're looking at the lab range, which is very broad. Now, if we were to look at a smaller held range or functional range, like, which should be 1.8 to 3 for TSH, <clears throat> I think a lot more people would be picked up as far as having hypothyroid symptoms or low-functioning th thyroid. Now, TSH is released by the pituitary gland and then acts on the thyroid gland itself to activate thyroid peroxidase enzyme. This enzyme is the enzyme that puts together iodine and tyrosine to make T4 and T3. Most of the time it acts on, or most of the time it produces about 93% of what the thyroid gland produces is actually T4. This is total T4, or protein bound. So that's why it's hugely important to check this on uh, lab work. As well as 7% uh, is produced as T3, which again is total T3 which these tests aren't being run, so we actually don't get an idea of what the thyroid gland is actually producing. So uh, if, if we have an issue with the thyroid gland itself where we're not producing, it could be stemming from a brain issue, or it could be the actual thyroid gland itself. Most of the time that we're finding, 80 to 90 percent of the time, we're looking at an immune attack on this thyroid peroxidase enzyme. So th this is where another test comes in called, this is where we would do uh, TPO antibodies. So your body is actually attacking the enzyme that's putting together the, the thyroid hormone. And that, now let's back up a little bit. T4, this is the main thing that acts, the pituitary is bathed in blood so that pituitary is monitoring levels of total T4 in the body. And if there's too much T4, the pituitary is going to, this is going to act, it's called negative feedback, it's going to act on the pituitary gland to secrete less TSH. So that's one way we can shut things down. The, the, again, the most common way, 80 to 90 percent of the time, we're looking at the immune system attacking the thyroid gland itself and actually going after the enzyme that produces T4 and T3. So if this is an immune issue, we need to look in and see what is causing the immune system to go haywire. So some of those things could be food sensitivities, could be gut infection, it could be leaky gut or intestinal permeability, it could be chronic stress, it could be hormone shifts that turn the immune system on. So all of those things need to be looked at. So Again, what we're looking at is brain function. The brain function acts on the pituitary gland, which is an outpocketing of brain. Now the pituitary acts on the thyroid gland to tell the enzyme to produce thyroid hormone. So this is the first step in understanding uh, thyroid hormone metabolism. Please join us again for uh, our follow-up steps.